Have you guys ever been compared to a cartoon character? No. Well, I'm just surrounded by dicks because I know damn well I don't look like a cartoon character. <clears throat> Usually the setup while I'm roasted is... Boy, you better get your, uh, uh, uh... Y'all know the show, uh, with the food, right? They got a little purple thing, he hang out with a big nigga, uh... He go, uh, ride, ride, ride all the time. And y'all know... Uh... Chowder? Yeah, yeah, that's right! You were just like a nigga, I swear, bro! Oh my god! That then got me thinking. Most of my friends don't know half the cartoons I be talking about, or even remember what they were. So who knows if the YouTube community even remembers either. That's why I made it my job here today to compile all the kid friendly TV programs at the back of my mind and educate y'all motherfuckers about the year of the 2000s. Let's a go. Oh, damn! This song kicks ass! Time Squad is a show consisting of a regular cartoon cast, which include a smart goody two-shoes, a rogue dumb guy, and the main character, deciding between the two. Boom! Nothing else to mention. These guys kidnap this kid from the present so he can fix fucked up timelines. The premise seemed cool, but the reason that people may not remember it it's because it didn't come on regularly. I mean, like, the schedule was really messed up back then, so it was even hard to catch the show while it was on. So that's why it's number 10 on my list. Beheaded? Oh. <gasps> Beheaded? Oh, we're done for. Black bald kid and golf girl as main characters? This is perfect. Tumblr will have a field day with this show. Fillmore is basically CSI Miami. The kids! The main characters being hall monitors, busting kids like the NYPD. They have chase scenes like cops. This show is just brilliant. And that's probably what the problem was. The lack of reruns for this show is probably limited because Disney didn't think that kids watch shows like this. And sadly, they're right. But not me though, I mean, I, I was messing with the show. I mean, like me and my grandma just sat up and watched this, so uh, that's why it's number nine on my list. Yeah. You played me for a sucker, Penny. I'm not going out like that. Not for you. Not anymore. Be at HQ first thing in the morning. Don't make me come get you. And one last thing, baby. That chicken was dry real dry hey you guys have any fond memories of zoog disney oh you don't neither do i but watch very close as i blow your mind boom You see, I mentioned Zoo Disney because Life with Derek seemed like a great fit for that edition of Disney Channel, besides the one that it aired on. It's no match for my boy Phil of the Future, but it holds itself as a memory of mine. It's currently on the list because Disney forgot that the show even existed. They currently do a block showing classic shows such as That's or Even and Kim Possible at midnight right now, but Life with Derek isn't even mentioned at all. It kind of reminds me of how Disney Channel games disappeared out of nowhere, even though they had a yearly thing going on. Brothers, and now you have two sisters, too. How do you feel about these exciting changes? Kick up, cartoons! Uh, Marty, you shouldn't put chocolate milk in your sugar cereal. Yeah, you really shouldn't. I should try that. It's so hard just to feel normal when everyone is completely paranormal and everything is totally deranged and you're the concept to this show was amazing, but apparently Nick did not think so. I haven't seen a single rerun of this show since it aired, and I think it suffered the similar kind of feat compared to Cat Scratch. Only a handful of people remember it. Nick is very common with doing shows like this. Hell, just ask The Legend of Korra and Mr. Meaty Meat. 
So basically, all I'm saying is, if you probably don't remember this show, it's because Nick fucked it in the ass. My nigga Harvey Beast is next too. Just watch. So, would you rather lick a payphone or swallow a bug? I'm licking that phone. Bug, all the way. That's nasty, bro. Too many legs, they get all stuck in your throat. You talking from experience, cute? <laughs> She's strange and she likes it. That's just the way she is. Meet Maggie Pesky. You see what they did there? And her best friend Cree Summer, living in a town of Sticky Feet, where her dream is to become a famous rock star. Seems cliche enough, right? Nope. Zack and Cody kicked this show straight in the fucking nuts when it premiered. Also along with this show as well. By the way, this show is gonna make the list too, but there's too many memes of it for it not to be remembered. Moving on, it's a shame that this show didn't get enough good reception for a second season. It showed that being different was cool, and women empowerment. Honestly, if this show ran on Disney XD, it would have been a hit. Selling to locusts is not allowed and you know it. Just look at the box! Looks to me like it says locusts should wear bright red seatbelts across their faces. Good advice, but I don't see what that has to do with scum bites. You know exactly. Are you gonna buy something? Because I've got customers waiting. Do you want to watch us, Moses Jones, minus Chris and Kid Rock? No. Well, fuck you. Here you go anyway. This show is basically a run on from the movie Osmosis Jones, but instead of being inside Bill fucking Murray, we're inside a generic 8th grade awkward teenager. Since the show's airing in 2002, it's been on Kids WB and Cartoon Network, and it ended with two seasons. But why would anyone forget this show you may ask? Well, it's because it doesn't have Bill fucking Murray, of course. Seriously, every time I ask somebody about this cartoon, I always get the same reply, which is, Osmosis Jones had a cartoon? The movie you saw? Well, actually it was a cartoon. Man, you gotta stop watching those things. They'll rot your brain. Four. Does Yakety Yak, Watch My Chops, Kaput and Zosky, and Ricky Sprocket, Showbiz Boy, ring a bell? No. Well, it's probably because you're poor as shit and your parents couldn't afford the premium package of your cable providers. These shows aren't all that memorable, but they do have a special place in my childhood. I recommend giving all of these a chance. They might ring a bell to you. Three. Hey, Rodney! Rodney! Hey, Rodney! You're an asshole! Squirrel Boy is a show about a boy with an unusual best friend getting into jams together with his best friends usually being the dick of the show. Oh wait, that's the plot to Foster's Home for Imaginary Friend. Well fuck it, it's pretty much the same thing. That's probably why I got canned on Cartoon Network in the first place. We kinda already had a show like this. Except for the fact that no one really liked Rodney, Blue kinda got some sympathy sometimes. But Rodney's just terrible. Actually, mm -mm. no, I take that back. Blue is a dick too. Dude, this one has a big scratch. I'll take it. Two. Born on the wrong end of the leash, she was a dreamer. And a little schemer. Hmm. A nutty mutt, living a dog's life. But when he'd hear the bell for school, he starts to do. One day he says, I'll take a chance. Raises his for a pair of pants. In a glance, school becomes his favorite pastime. I have buried a bone for the last time. Yes. I wanna be a boy. Back when Toon Disney was my shit, this show called Teacher's Pet regularly came on. It was about this dog named Spot, voiced by Nathan Lane, but you may know him as Timon from Lion King more. He wants to become a real boy by going to school with his owner slash sidekick, Leonard Helperman. Now if you don't recall this show, you may recall the art style a bit because it's done by Gary Baseman, who is also the illustrator for the board game Cranium. Teacher's Pet ran for two seasons, but the only problem with that is that it was on Toon Disney. Another program block you need premium cable for. But even if it wasn't, I'm not quite sure what channel it will be on. 
I want to say Nick, but they'll just bend it over and penetrate it. Gosh, these jumpers are killing me. Has anyone seen my riding crop? Now for some honorable mentions. Georgia the Jungle, Wayside, Chop Saki Chooks, Sitting Ducks. I mean, like, I just figured out that the show existed. My friend told me that it aired on Cartoon Network for like, I don't know, a month. But I'm, I'm just not figuring out that the show exists. And Timo Supremo. What? Holy fuck. This show. This show is actually the only reason I made this list. Cartoon Network has gone completely out of their way to make sure that we forget this masterpiece. Well, I can't say that they forgot him because he is included in the 20th anniversary poster. So. But it's a shame that I can search for the whole scoreboard series on YouTube, but when I search for this, nothing. Zilch, nada. I distinctly remember in between seasons of the show, the voice of Robot Jones went from Macintosh Jr. to an actual voice actor. Yeah, that's right. The main character of a children's cartoon was voiced by a computer. The creator, Greg Miller, dedicated the animation of this show to one of his other classics, Schoolhouse of Rock. So far right now, the episodes of the show can only be found on Vimeo, but as I say this right now, it's probably getting removed. Cartoonero surely isn't holding back any punches on making the show unknown, but I'm just personally waiting on someone on eBay to sell a bootleg DVD with all the episodes on it. Make it happen! <laughs> You'll make billions! The Yardman Twins To destroy Robot Jones Shannon Westerberg To break Robot Jones's heart Principal Madman To keep Robot Jones down your mission, watch whatever happened to Robot Jones. Premieres Friday at 9.30 on Cartoon Network. Well guys, that's it for this top 10. Every show featured on this list is most likely not going to get their own individual review based on the fact that I kind of just did that. If you're saddened that shows like the modifiers didn't make it onto the list, well that's because it has rule 34. And everyone remembers rule 34. Also, if there was a show on Discovery Kids, then I don't know what it is. Like I I, I never watched that channel. It, it, it looked pretty boring. I don't know. And if you do remember any of these shows, feel free to share your memories about them in the comments. I'm D Dubman from Review Your Life. See ya!